Hey everyone, it's Mason Choate from hogbeat.com. This clip you're about to watch is from our weekly podcast, The Hog Beat Hour. You should go check it out. We upload it to YouTube on Fridays at 6 a.m. It's also on ESPN Arkansas on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. If you also want to listen to it in audio form, you can find it on any streaming service, Spotify, Apple, anywhere you listen to your podcast. But go check it out and enjoy this clip from The Hog Beat Hour. All right, we're back here on the Hogbeat Hour. Mason Choate and Andrew Hutchinson with you. We're going to talk some Arkansas baseball right now. So the Hogs had scrimmages over the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, really the big question that everybody wants to know is Peyton Paulette, he, he down, out, out for the season. He's not going to pitch for Arkansas this season. We know Connor Nolan is probably your lock for he's going to be a starter. So he, he pitched on Saturday. He had two innings, five strikeouts. Hutch, outside of Connor Nolan, it, I mean, you've heard Hagen Smith, you've heard Jackson Wiggins. We know it's going to be between five or six guys, but from what you saw, um, what do you think of some of the other guys who could possibly be a starter for Arkansas this season? Yeah, I mean, you'd like to think that Hagen Smith and Jackson Wiggins are two guys that can can be those other guys along with Connor Nolan. Those are both, you know, first round caliber arms. Uh, that that would be that really heralded that they, they can throw hard they can pitch really well I mean Hagen is also a lefty so you'd have a lefty in the rotation that would always be good uh, but neither one of them like went out there and just dominated Jackson Wiggins actually struggled uh, I know he had a decent first inning I think he had a double play ball that kind of helped him get out of the first inning unscathed and then I don't think he recorded an out in his second inning of work uh, he got hit around pretty hard uh, struggled with his commands, kind of some of the same issues we saw from him last year, which was really discouraging to see. Uh, but again, that was just your first outing of preseason scrimmages. So we'll see how he develops over the next couple of weeks, because that's a guy they really want to be a you know dependable arm, whether that be as a starter, or maybe he's just a guy that can give you a couple innings out of the bullpen. And, you know, if he can pump 97 for a couple innings, then, hey, I'll take it. You know, I mean, that, that, that would be really good. You know, a name that that maybe surprised me uh, just because we, we haven't really heard much about him is Mark Adamiak. Uh, he's a guy that has been at Arkansas for a couple of years. He, he made a couple of appearances in the pandemic shortened 2020 season. Uh, didn't exactly do well. I think he struggled. I think he had like the worst ERA on the team, you know, just in limited uh, innings. And then he redshirted last year, didn't play at all. Then he goes, I see him pop up in the Cape Cod. I'm like, what in the world? Why is this guy in the Cape Cod? I mean, the prestigious summer ball uh, league. And uh, he, he did okay, like put up decent numbers, drew some you know positive reviews. And then all of a sudden Van Horn's telling us the other day that he's touched 98 and could be a guy that, that pitches a lot for him. And I'm like, oh, what? This guy throws 98? Are you kidding me? This is a guy that was originally signed with, with Wichita State and was heading there until he was a late add to Arkansas. I don't know exactly how that all unfolded, but, man, what a pickup for Arkansas. If this guy can come in and throw 98 and be a dependable arm. I mean, he had a, a pretty good outing the other day in his scrimmage. It was against not necessarily the starters. you got to take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but he was a name that, that I was really impressed by. You know, Heston Toll is a guy that's really intriguing. He looked really good as a true freshman uh, in limited innings uh, last year. Had a pretty good ERA, uh, made some, you know, had some big innings in some big games. Uh, maybe he's a guy who could be a starter. I think he had a pretty good summer. I uh, can't remember where he played. I want to say maybe the California League or something. So uh, he's a guy that could maybe be a starter for him. Um, I mean, as you can tell, there's just so many question marks, a lot of really talented arms guys that, that can be starters, guys that could be key relievers, long relievers. Uh, really, the only thing, as you said, that, that's really solidified right now is Connor Nolan is going to be a starter. And honestly, he looks the part of a Friday night ace. Uh, maybe not necessarily as talented as a Hagen Smith, Jackson Wiggins, uh, you know, Peyton Paulette, but a guy can pitch. He's a veteran, older guy, and, and looked really, really dominant on Saturday. So maybe he could be a guy that is your ace and then you just kind of figure it out from there. Yeah. I mean, look, you look back to Nolan's freshman year. I mean, think about all the movement he had on his pitches and it was just like the one thing on him was he didn't have the velocity that you wanted him to have. 
And Van Horn's talked about how he's added he's added some velocity. I think he said he's up to 92, 93 on some pitches. I don't think we saw that on Saturday, but you would like to trust Van Horn at his word. So um, yeah, we talked about starters, and we don't have to go super in-depth on the bullpen because I, I'll have a bullpen story coming out here in the next few days, um, kind of detailing some of the guys that can make an impact out of the bullpen. But, uh, Hutch, who do you really think is going to – Maybe be, I mean, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna be Kevin Cops. That's not gonna happen. But somebody who can come out and maybe be your number one guy out of the bullpen. I'm I mean, some of the guys I look at, I think, you know, Nick Griffin, Isaac Bracken, Zach Morris, like those, those are the guys that I'm looking at. Or is there anybody maybe outside of those three names that you think could be a, a, a force out of the bullpen? You know, I think one of these freshmen is going to emerge. I mean, Nick Moten is a guy that he wasn't necessarily the most heralded guy. I think in perfect game rankings, he was like 300 something. So like not one that's going to like draw a bunch of headlines, but he's a guy that looked really good. He seems to be more polished. He's throws in the mid nineties already. Uh, so I think he could be a guy that, you know, maybe closes games for you, or maybe he's just a guy that's a, a really good bullpen arm. Uh, you know, another freshman that, that kind of impressed me over the weekend, I saw him pitch on Monday is, uh, Brady Tiger. Uh, he's a guy that's was, he's a top 100 recruit, top 75 recruit, something like that. You know, one of the guys that did draw those headlines did not pitch much at all. Mate, I think I heard he pitched maybe one inning in the spring, uh, before he had to get shut down injuries, stuff like that. But he looked really good against some uh, decent hitters. If I remember correctly, in the scrimmage on Monday. So maybe he's the guy that could be uh, someone that give you some valuable innings out of the bullpen. But you, know, you mentioned uh, Isaac Bracken. Uh, I think he's going to be a, a stud for Arkansas out of the bullpen. He, he's a guy that was a Friday night guy from Northern Colorado a couple of years back. He was expected to be a key bullpen guy this past season in 2021, uh, but he had a, an arm injury, had to redshirt the entire year, sit out, and he came, he wanted to come back and he really wanted to pitch for Arkansas. And here he is. And he goes out and, and looks really good for a couple innings and in a scrimmage, uh, almost perfect. I think he allowed one base runner or something, but nothing, nothing beyond that. So th those are some guys that I could, I could see being big key bullpen arms. And of course you mentioned uh, Zach Morris being a left-hander. He's a guy you need to be the guy you expect him to be. He's a guy that has a ton of potential. I had heard his name being mentioned as a potential starter a couple of years ago. I don't know if that's a, a something that's in his future, but if he could just be a, a guy that gives you two, three innings out of the bullpen, that would be massive, especially if you don't have like a super solidified rotation and your starters don't give you more than, you know, four or five innings. You need someone like Zach Morris kind of bridge you to whoever your closer ends up being. Yeah, Morris is a guy that he's he's shown glimpses during his time at Arkansas last year. I think he threw 15 innings. Um, I'd have to look back at the strikeouts he had, but he showed he showed signs last year. He played in the Cape Cod over the summer, had had a 1.2 ERA and 25 something innings pitched. So he I, I like Zach Morris, um, like he said, but let, let's go to this batting lineup because last year somehow i mean all year it was the lineup for arkansas that was just so dominant so much power and then at the end of the year really the achilles heel was you couldn't get hits and so this year you look at this lineup i mean it's almost like they have two starting lineups that they could throw out there of of guys at the plate that are just really good um and i i look at this past week in the scrimmages. I mean, of course, Caden Wallace, you want to talk about a guy who probably saw his name wasn't on the all American list and wanted to make a point. He didn't play Saturday, but Sunday, Monday, four at bats, four hits and a home run. I mean, this dude, Caden Wallace. I mean, you think Caden Wallace is probably going to be an all American this year, Hutch. I think he could end up being the best player on the team. I mean, no, no shade at all at Robert Moore, or, uh, Jalen Battles or, or anyone else, but I think Caden Wallace could have a monster record-breaking year for, for Arkansas. I think he's definitely all SEC. He could be in the mix for SEC player of the year because uh, the dude can hit. I mean, that's there. He's gonna, I think he's going to have a higher batting average this year. Uh, I think his batting average maybe didn't look super great last year, but if you look at what he did in SEC play, 
it was very comparable to the freshman seasons of Heston Kerstad and Casey Martin. And that, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good company to be in. So uh, I think he could be a guy that just has a monster year. Plus he's moved from the outfield to the third base. That's kind of his natural position. I got to talk to him after Monday scrimmage and you could just tell he was so happy to be back at third base. That's where he loves to play. And he's just so athletic. He's going to be really, really good there. I mean, I, everyone talks about how good Jacob Nesbitt's glove was at third base last year. I think Caden Wallace is going to be just as good defensively, but miles better at the plate. So could be a, a, a in store for a really special season from the Arkansas third baseman. Yeah. I mean, you got to think that maybe the move to third base was part of the reason he wasn't named an all American preseason, all American, because I mean, there's a lot of teams that those national guys have to cover. So I'm sure that maybe that slipped under the rug, but I want to talk about some of these newcomers that we watched in the, uh, in the scrimmages, because he, there's some really good newcomers. You talking about Peyton Stovall, a guy who you're talking about preseason all American. He's there in almost all the lists. So Peyton Stovall, um, he had three hits and nine at bats. Um, another guy, Jace Borfin out of Oklahoma, um, a guy that, I, I expect big things from Chris Lanzilli from Wake Forest. I mean, if you look at his stats at Wake Forest, this dude was just a powerhouse, and he didn't have a hit over the weekend. So maybe a newcomer that impressed you doesn't have to be one of those three, Hutch. Yeah, one you didn't mention that I think is going to be really, really good for Arkansas is Michael Turner, the catcher transfer from Kent State. Uh, technically, he's a guy who could play either the corner infield spots as well. Uh, it, but if he can stay healthy, which is something he struggled with throughout his career, I think he could be really, really good for Arkansas. He kind of brings a veteran uh, kind of presence behind the play. And that's no, no diss on Dylan Leach at all. I think Dylan Leach is going to play and play quite a bit, probably more than most backup catchers uh, have under Dave Van Horn in recent years. Uh, but he's also a guy, he's a sophomore, but he technically should be just a true freshman this year because he skipped his senior year of high school to come and play for Arkansas early. So really young dude. Uh, whereas uh, Michael Turner has been around for a long time. Yes, he played in a Mac, not anywhere close to the same as the SEC, uh, but I've just heard nothing but positive things about him. I mean, Dave Van Horn said something along the lines of like, I don't know how he's here. Like he should be playing pro ball right now. Like he is really, really good. And I've heard the same thing from Caden Wallace. I've heard the same thing from other player people that are around the program. I've been really high on him. So I think he's a guy, and I think D1 baseball just ranked him as like the 11th best catcher in the country. Uh, so pretty crazy that you're going from a Casey Opitz who was fantastic to a Michael Turner who uh, you might see a little bit of a drop off defensively. He's probably not going to throw out guys at the same rate as Casey Opitz did because Opitz was just incredible at that. But, but he's not bad defensively behind the plate. And I think he's a much better offensive threat uh, at catcher as well. So it, I don't know if we're going to see a ton of drop off there at the catcher spot with Michael Turner coming in. That would be great for Arkansas. And, you know, Casey Opens, you talk about him. He always had the clutch gene at the plate, but he was never like a, a super consistent hitter. And you might get that with Michael Turner. Also worth mentioning that Jalen Battles recovering from injury. He, he played, looked okay, nine, nine at bats, three hits. So that's another guy that you needed out there. And Jalen Battles, um, was out there. So we're going to wrap up the baseball talk because we got to run, but um, we're going to talk football next. And then uh, let's see, what are we going to talk football? We're going to talk recruiting. And then we're going to talk new D line coach. We're going to talk junior days, everything you want to know, all that here on the Hogbeat Hour. <laughs> 